Um, God bless you, everyone. Uh, how is the course so far? How is the assignment? How is it coming out? Let's discuss a little while. Man, it's a beautiful course. Um, it has also contributed to, you know, to my own knowledge. The little things I know before, it has become broad today. Uh, that I thank you, I thank the Lord Almighty, and I thank you as a pastor too. And I hope you give it up. What you're doing, what you're doing, man, is not bad. I see it is also not easy. That is why I praise you, man. I praise you. And I thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Please, let's get feedback from our, for the past three courses that we have done. Let's get feedback, introduction course, understanding Yeshua. We have done uh, the last course. Uh, Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get feedback, the assignments, the, the lecture, the textbooks, the videos, and the way it's been following consistently. How I many? Give me your feedback. Hallelujah. Yeah, I I really commend on this class. It's, it's a wonderful class. It's, yeah, yeah, it's helping. It's really helping my spiritual life. The more, most especially from the last class, the spiritual growth. It was a wonderful class, and yeah, I think like I I there are times like I really sleep at night. I don't pray, but these days, like I really wake up at night to pray, even when I'm tired. Yeah, it's like it's giving me this consciousness and awakening. I need to experience this spiritual growth, and I need to focus more and more on it. So I really love, I, I really love to be here. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's get more, much more feedback. Feedbacks. It's very good that we get feedback, so we know how to make adjustments and, and put in more efforts. Feedback and more feedback. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yes, I will not fail to also comment that, sir, you are really doing a good work and I'm just privileged to be part of this class. So, yes. I've learned a lot, especially when it comes to um, things of ministry work. Um, the last thing was when we talk about maturity, because it takes a lot of, it takes a really deep spirituality for you to handle matters. Don't just say, Ah, okay, just a girl. I'm just, um, I actually go deeper to find, to really see well, where, um, where I'm not doing well, where I have to improve. Especially, um, should I say, is a testimony or, um, with the sister, with the sister, the question she asked actually. Well, like, oh, okay. Yes, um, I was really blessed in with that question and with this spiritual. When I, I, I thought of it, it's something like something you 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 always teaching about, and there are some other things being is still left that you don't know. Like when we talk about that, the spiritual growth is something. You don't know it all. It's a process. And I was actually blessed, especially uh, in the time of with the, with the people that I am working with, how to behave and how to uh, be able to see that I'm not offended and they, they too, they are not offended, even if it comes to something like I'm being offended and they are also are offended. I'll be able to handle the matter. I'm really blessed. 
God bless you. That's a very that's a very deep one. Uh, a spiritual yeah. maturity from spiritual growth. It's um, it's something even I and every everybody uh, needs to work on daily. Uh, yeah. It's a big eye opener that you know that you have not arrived. You know, don't see yourself as you have arrived spiritually. Yeah. It's a big it's a big lesson for every minister, for every leader. For every pastor, evangel- every every man of anybody that has been in a position where you think that you have the the, 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 the moment you begin to think that you already know it all is the, be- the beginning of the downfall of that leader. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you're able to catch that revelation to know that um, in any position that you are, it's always um, it's always a process. You know, God is processing you. You know. I was listening to one man, uh, one preacher today, this morning, and he said, he was teaching uh, his congregation, and he said, uh, I, I asked for strength, you know, and God gave me challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I asked for love. God gave me troubled people and troubled church, you know, <laughs> and difficult well, people, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, because in, 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 in dealing with difficult people and difficult church members, you will know love firsthand. You know, mm-hmm. in, in dealing with people, in dealing with challenges that come your life, you will grow strength. Strength will grow from you. God will not drop love, will not drop strength from up down into your hand as it just begin to grow spiritual muscle. No, when you pray for strength, God will put you amongst challenges. <laughs> he, that's, he, say, he said, and I knew that my prayers has been answered. You know? It you is know? So. so these are... Uh, these are these are very good. I don't want you, I don't want us to give me only only um, only good good testimony. Please say the place that we have not been doing well. <laughs> don't only give me only the good part of uh, the feedback. Please be, be free to tell us that we have not done well in this area. We have not done well in this area. But because of our time, I would like us to send that, those kind of feedback to uh, those WhatsApp number that we provided. Please send feedback because of our time. Please send other feedback. If you have other feedback, please send really, really critical feedback to those WhatsApp number where we normally send assignment and we will continue to improve and continue to ask God to give us the grace to improve. Let's hit the ground running because of our time today. Today, how many of us have seen the video or the textbook on leadership? How many of us have had the time to go through it? To, you know, to, yeah, yeah to go through it. Yeah, I listened to the videos. Uh, how, how how did you find them? How how did you what did you get from it? What, what <laughs> yeah, you know, in every chapter, in every verses, I'm always catching up something. Oh, and oh, I love that. It, it, it inspired me a lot that each time I <laughs> from the beginning of the of the of the course, I've been I always catch up something. I always go with something or something that That's when I listen and listen to the one and two, um, I actually got something there. God bless, you. So, God bless you. God bless you for listening and for following. You see, the essence of the course and the advantage is in following it. It's in doing what is required to do. Um, we don't want people to just graduate from the course, just go through the course without feeling the impact, letting the, letting the the discussion, the assignment, the test, the exam, letting it hit you as a person. Once it hits you as a person, it becomes a challenge for you and it becomes too big for you. You have to ask for the Holy Spirit, help me to carry these things. It's heavy for me. Then the impact will be done in your spirit. Then the growth will come in your spirit. You know, so do not shy away from it. You know, like we said at the beginning of the, during the orientation course, Many, many people want to throw in the towel. Many people want to quit along the way. Don't quit. Don't quit. Because the enemy will make you everything for you to quit. We're throwing everything. We'll bring more job for you. Will it, maybe we'll, they won't promote you in your place of work. They will give you more work to do, give you more money. So you feel like dropping this one by the side. This, this Saturday thing, I don't think I can continue. Let me just, you know. So the enemy will orchestrate anything, everything to make sure that this spiritual growth that you are going to get at the end of these six months, that you don't get to that level. That those truths, those revelations that will be released, you know, through the through this course and the discussion and the lecturers that will be coming, and you don't catch it. 
You know, so we need to fight it. We need to fight it with all that we have to make sure that we grab every revelation, every video message, every textbooks, every video lessons that we go through them, that we listen to them, and we do the assignments. In doing the assignments, then you are prepared. Then something has entered your spirit because one of the things that the assignment is designed to do is to challenge us. That's why we don't give contemporary textbooks assignment. If you see the assignments we give, we don't give textbooks assignment. We say, what is your take? What is your take? Somebody, somebody, one of the students called me during the week, say, uh, sir, that's, what is your take on this subject? The thing is, it's doing my head like this. I mean, it's doing my head like this. I said, yes. What is your, it, it, because what is your take means, what have you got to add to it? What have you got to take from it? And what have you got to add for it? What is it that you want to contribute to that discussion? You know, that is your take. What, what is it that you want to contribute to that discussion? What is it that is there that you want to contribute to it? What, what has the discussion expounded in your spirit? That this is my take. Ah, this is, this is a discussion. This is my take on this discussion. You have to give your own take. You have to give your own input. We are not here to, yeah, we are not here to spoon feed everybody. We are here to go together. That is the essence. What is your take? What are you contributing to this thing? Whatever you contribute, whatever you say, don't believe me when I say we need those assignments to come in because in those assignments, we are going to be preparing for the next class, for the next year's course. With your assignment, with your contribution, we are going to make even the next leadership class course more impactful because we are going to take from your response, from your answers, and add to it. So it's not only one man's wisdom. It's the wisdom that God has given to all of us. So it's not only one man's wisdom. So when you, take, when you give us a good response, we say, ah, this response is very good. Let's add it to this course. Let's add it to this course. Let's take this one. Let's add it. So we keep adding. That is why the course of last year and the course of this year is not the same thing. We added so many things to make this year. Mm. So next year's course is not going to be the same thing. We are going to add to it because it's a living course. It's the word of God. We learn daily. We take corrections daily. And we improve daily. Yeah. Thank how you. It is Thank yeah, this is how it is designed. This is how it works. From what you respond, we, we listen to them. We listen to your audio respond. We read your textbook also. We look, go to Facebook. We read them. We add them. We begin to add them. We begin to take, we begin to add them. So it makes us better. And the next class will come and enjoy a better platform. And the next one. So that is how it works. So I would just want to welcome you to today's class and today's leadership course as we hit the ground running. What is leadership? I mean, let's discuss. What have we learned about leadership? When we hear the word leadership or leader, what comes to our mind? Let's discuss. What comes to our mind? What is it that comes to our mind when we hear the word leader or leadership? What is it that comes to our mind? Please, you are free to discuss. You are free to say one or two things. Just keep it short. Just keep it short. What is it that comes to our mind? When you hear the word leadership or leader, what is it that comes? When we say we are doing a leadership course, a leadership in ministry, or leadership in whatever it is, what is it that comes to our mind? What are the things that we think about when we hear the word leader, leadership? Um, you just say a definition of what I can just say a leader, a leader can be competent in leading people. A leader has a vision. A, a leader has all it takes to, to impact in people's life and destiny. So that is all about a leader. Let me just leave it like that for other people to say. Yeah, yeah God bless you. you. You are taking characteristics of a good leader. You are taking the, that to define leadership, which is good. Yeah, characteristics of a good leader to define leadership. That's good. Yes, somebody, anybody else wants to add to what our sister have said? Praise yeah. God. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll define leadership as the head leading the body, like just as our human body is, like the head is the leader to the body, like where the eyes want you to go, that's where the leg goes. <coughs> just, just like that, just, a, a person, it's just like a person that leads people, that influences people with his character, that leads people with 
that influences people around around him, around around her, something like that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Elisa is a teacher. And the Elisa is someone we look into. Okay. All right. Elisa, Elisa is someone that can give others. And a leader is a director. Okay. All right. Thank you, a sister. Lead, Thank you. A Keep, leader, it short. Keep it short, quickly, short, just not too much, just, just summarize. Okay. Yeah. You want, to, you want to say the last one? Leader is. Yes. <laughs> a leader is a governor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. God bless you. Uh, you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just one word. Um, I would describe a leader as uh, like a train uh, and the engine. Is the engine part of the train that carries the coaches of the train? That is whom a leader is, in one word, please. Okay. You mean the leader is the is the engine or the head of the, okay. the train. Amen. What 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 if uh, any other person wants to say something? Uh, anybody before I before I commit, uh, any other person wants to say something? Uh, go ahead. Um I see leader. A leader is is created to live in the areas of gifting. Um, the areas in areas of dominion. A leader is, it's not, we don't start a leader with a group, but a leader starts with, with you. If you, um, if you, if you discover yourself, that is where leadership is born in you. God bless you. Amen. What, what, are, what if I tell you now that everybody's correct? Everybody's correct. Everyone is totally correct. Everyone is very correct. What if I also say that, yes, somebody types and sends something. Yes, a leader is someone who guides. God bless you, Mr. Chidi. God bless you, uh, Brother Chidi. What if I say to you that, you are a leader. What will you say? Yeah, it is true. Yeah. What if I say to you, you are a leader? What will you say? Are you a governor yet? You might not be a governor yet. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. you are a leader. Yes. That's correct, man of God. That's correct, Pastor. Yeah. There's what a seed I... of leadership in everyone. There's a seed of leadership in everyone. Mm. Mm. Hidden in every believer. Everyone is a leader. A leader. Amen. Uh, you know, in many leadership, in many schools, in many business schools and ministry schools, uh, this this um, topic is mostly mystified, making you to believe that um, leaders are only those that we are those long caps or those bishop with long robes or those people that stays only at the altar that is a leader you know but in this course we we turn it we don't we don't we don't follow that we follow what jesus christ says because the we this course is an example uh, we are we are raising role models and we are using jesus christ example as leadership even in this course and so we try to demystify everything that Many leadership teams and many ministries and many organizations has mystified over the years and the leadership, making people to believe that you don't, making um, you and I to believe that we don't have anything quality that can make us leaders. You know, they might not say it directly to us, but because of the the language, because of the body language, 
because of the setting that we have seen, because of the organization, because of the structure, we have ruled ourselves out of anything that has to do with leadership. How many of us agree with me? Yes, 100%. Because of the structure, because of the organization, because of the system, because of the, the setting, the language of the setting shows that you, you yourself, you cannot ever, ever think of being a leader. You cannot ever dream of being a leader. But with Jesus, it's not so. That is why this course is so important in this program. It is so, so, so important. Because we need to demystify it. Unless we demystify what we believe, we will not be able to serve God the way we need to serve God. We will always approach the throne of grace with that servant attitude. And as long as we carry that servant attitude up and down, we will not be able to be open to those things that are freely made available to us and everyone. Everyone is a leader in his in or her own right. Everyone is a leader. Now let's discuss. A leader is a person. A leadership is taking responsibility. A leader is a person. You say a leader, oh, this person is a leader, this person is a leader. So as long as you are a person, you are a leader. And once you are taking your responsibility, you are doing your rules and responsibility, we can say that it is called leadership. Somebody taking responsibility of this, somebody taking charge of this, we can call everyone that this is the leadership of this place. This is the leadership of this nation. This is the leadership of this organization because they have roles and responsibility and people are taking that their roles and responsibility. So we can call it leadership. So leader with the role together is called leadership, but a person is called a leader. So let's define it. What makes a person a leader? What really makes a person a leader? What makes a person a leader? Now, a leader, a pe- what makes a person a leader is somebody who does his responsibility and who does it at the right time and for the right purpose. Are we still together? Yes. Yeah. A leader is somebody who does, who carries out his responsibility, who has responsibility and who carries out his responsibility at the right time for the right purpose. That is a leader. It does not matter whether the responsibility is is governing a nation or responsibility is part of being a president or responsibility is part of being uh, a cleaner in the church or an usher or being uh, a super in the organization, as long as you are discharging your roles and you are doing it faithfully and as, at the right time, then you are a leader in your own right. You are a leader in your own rights. So it's taking responsibility to do the right thing at the right time. Let's look at the book of John chapter 13. John chapter 13, very, very important. From 15 to 17. John chapter 13? Yes, from 15 to 17. Okay. John 13, 15 to 17? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Can I read? Yes, start from 14. Yeah, you can read. It says, If then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Yeah. Go ahead. ahead. Okay. Okay. Very, very, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than this than his Lord, neither that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are happy are ye if ye do them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, where are you reading? Luke chapter seventeen. John. John, 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 John chapter John thirteen. Yeah, from fourteen to seventeen. John chapter thirteen. Okay. Thank you. So if then your Lord, if I am your Lord and your teacher and 
have washed your feet. You also ought to what? To wash for one another's feet. So he has set an example. Here is Jesus Christ. You know, he, he, he said, you will call me Lord. You call me teacher. You call me master. But here I am setting an example of leader to you. You, you transcribe to me with all this leadership style. You transcribe to me with all these titles. But here I am giving you the real roles and the real responsibility, the real, the real duties of a leader. I have given you the real duties of a leader is to come down to your level and show you and give you an example how it is done. In the kingdom, this is how leadership is defined. You know, they were trying to ascribe to Jesus, ah, you are the master, you are the teacher. So, so Jesus Christ noticed that the people wanted to use title to tie him up to where he does not belong. And for him to quickly set the tone and make them understand the kingdom principle kind of leadership, he quickly gave them an example. And he made them to understand. He said, he said, he said, happy is the man who does these things. Let's read verse 16 so that you can understand it properly. Verse 16. So most assuredly, I, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor he who is sent greater than who sent him. So if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Do you know what this thing represents? Do you know what this thing means? This thing means if you can set yourself free, if you can set your family free, if you can set your ministry free, from the hook and from the chain of leadership role. If you can let them know that everyone is a leader and if you can be able to successfully give them good example of leadership and make everyone impactful in their own right, in their own place, then your ministry will be happy for it. Then your life will be happy for it. Then your family will be happier for it. For example, you have a son who is of age, who have grown. You have many sons, two sons, three sons, four sons. And you did not take, teach them to take responsibility for their life. You do not teach them how to, you know, how to take care of themselves, bait themselves, go to school themselves, eat themselves, prepare lunch for themselves, and do all these things for them because you are their father or you are their mother. You do all these things for them. And they have grown of age and you did not put them into respect give them responsibility. Let them know what they can do and encourage them to do it because you just want to do everything yourself. At the end of the day, who is going to, who is going to fall sick? Who is going to take the whole blame? Who is going to, who is going to, go, who is going to, who is going to pay the, the price? The person, of course, this is what Jesus Christ is saying here. Jesus Christ is telling them that if you teach one another the principles of the kingdom kind of leadership and you show them good examples, that this is how leadership is done in the, in the house of God. It's not by calling titles or I just seeing somebody who is an overall and overall. Nobody touches him. He does everything. The person is going to die early. The person is going to be frustrated. The person is going to fall sick. But if you teach these things to one another and you do it for one another and you encourage also one another to go and do it to others, then you have taught them leadership style because you have also made them understand that they are also leaders and give them responsibility and encourage them to go and do the same thing. Then you have raised leader. Then you will be happy. Then you will find joy. Does everybody understand that? Is it quite understood? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is kingdom kind of leadership. This is the kind of leadership Jesus Christ came to. To explain to us, and he also went ahead to also explain it in Matthew chapter 20 from verse 25. Jesus Christ also went to explain it there. Let's see Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25. Matthew chapter 20. He also went further to explain what he meant. 20, 20, 20. He also went further to explain his kind of leadership. But Jesus called them unto him and said, mm -hmm. You know that the prince of these Gentiles exercised to exercise 
dominion over them, dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Mm -hmm. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, minister or your servant. Go ahead. Should continue. Yes, to 28. Okay, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Yes. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's quite easily explained, right? Yes. He that must be the leader among you, he that must be the head, let him be the least. Let him be the least. It's not, it's not, um, it's not a literal translation of the meaning. It means let him fold his sleeve and get back to work and make an example. That's what he just tried to say. He that wants to be the head must be an example of who he wants to be. Must show an example. You know, that's what Jesus Christ is saying to be. It's not, it's not like saying that you should go and be the cleaner or go and be uh, go and be doing the cleaning job or go and be doing the least job. Jesus Christ is saying that if you want to be the head, give good example, show good example to others, the way you want them to be. Be like them. Do it like them. Do it like the way you want it to be. Be a good example. Show the good example of whoever you want to become. My brother. Don't say, don't say, do do as I do as I say, not do as I do. No, Jesus Christ does not want do as I say, not do as I do. No, you have you have to fold your sleeve and show example. He said the Lord, the people of this world, they lord it over you that they are the governors, they are the head, they are the leaders. So they make you like like a servant, like a slave. But in the kingdom, it's not so. He that must be the head, that must be the least, must be what must be ready to serve. Must have a serve a, a, an attitude of service, a heart of service. Must be ready to be willingly put himself forward. So that's one of the characteristics of a leader, kingdom leader. You must be able to put yourself forward, show a good example of this is how the kingdom of God should be. Your life, your word, your expression, everything about you should be a living example of what you are talking about, of who you reflect. This is Jesus Christ's example of a leadership. You must be able to have that servant. You must be able to serve the people with commitment, with greater commitment. They have to be able to see the commitment as number one, as this, you know, that, that servant attitude, that servant commitment has to be there, that this one is ready to serve, not to load it on you the way the people load it on you. So that's why we started with the class. What do you, what comes to your mind as leaders? You know, that's why I said everybody was correct. Because the people of this world, they want you to see only the governors as leaders. The governors want you to see uh, them as the top, as the king, as the priest, as the leader, as the, as, the, as, the, as the commissioner. You know, this is what they want you to see. But, you know, in, in, this, in this world, in, this, in the developed world, you can see an example that even those ones, they are working for the people. You know? In Deutschland, they call it the Vogue King. They call it the Vogue is King. The people is King. How do you say it in Deutschland, uh, uh, Mr. Obama? Yes. That say the, the people is King. Vogue, uh, the Vogue uh, King. Yeah, they have a way they write it on the on the National Assembly of, of the of the country. You know, we're talking about the people is King. Why the people that are representing the people, those uh, the, the, uh, the folk, the yes. folk, yes, yes. Book, yeah, broken. So why the people who who you vote there as the commissioner, the minister, the president, the yeah. councillor, they are the servants because they serve the people. You know, in westernized world, we see a little example. Just it's not really complete, but I mean, it's a little example. It's a little example of how the kingdom of God is. But back home in, in, in most of our continents where we come from in Africa, it's not so. Because the people has made up to understand that once they are the leaders, they are the governors, they are the ministers, they are the commissioners, the every other person is, is nothing. Every other person is just slaves. They are, they are, you know, 
but it's not like that in the kingdom. The kingdom is you that have decided to be the leader, learn to serve the people with greater commitment, with greater love, with greater selflessness. Show them example how it is done. Be the number one to be willing, be selfless in your attitude. This is what Jesus Christ was saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. And leadership also starts with us. Just like my brother said, it starts with us. We understanding who we are and doing our part. When we do our part, we are on the right path of leadership. Do your own part. Before you point hand to somebody else, before you point hand to somebody else, you do your own path. Once you do your part, then the rest will be easy. Then the rest will be easy because people will see that, oh, you are getting up early in the morning. You are laying good foundation. You are giving scriptures. You are giving us instructions on what to do. You know, you know, you know people always assume People always assume everybody knows what, what to do until you give people responsibility. You know that. You know that people always assume that people know what to do until you give them responsibility. Yes. It is when you give people responsibility that you know that people don't even know, they don't even know what to do. Uh, 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 a professor was teaching in the class and he said, and he said, even if you give if you, if, if, an, if you give an exam to the class, the whole class, and you write and you write in one part of the board, you write the questions on the board, and in the other side of the board, you write the answers, and you write here, this is the questions, and this is the answers. And some people will still fail that exam. Yeah, I know where you're going, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> Some people will still fail that exam. So, so do not assume that everybody knows what to do. That is why, that is why we need as leaders, we need to develop leaders. One of the great characteristics of the leaders is to develop other leaders. To make sure that everybody around you are leaders. That's what Jesus Christ was implying in that John chapter 13 that we read. That once you know these things as you do them, you will be happy for it. Your life will be better. Because when you make everybody around you leader, then the work will be easy for you. Because everybody knows their roles and responsibilities. Everybody knows what to do. You know, just imagine uh, uh, a parent who had trained all the children and the children knows what to do. They already know what to do. It makes life easy for that family. Because you have been able to set a good example. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody knows what, how, what to say, how to respond. Everybody knows their roles and responsibilities. It becomes easy. But remember, it starts with you. You doing your own part. Leadership always starts with us. We doing our own part. If you have not done your own part, you don't have any capacity. to. You don't have any... Uh, any air country to hold another person responsible for not doing this on our own part. It starts with us. Yes, it starts with us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's talk about some types of leadership and some qualities of leadership before because our time is just running. A uh, lot types of leadership, so you know, and characteristics of leadership. There are different kinds of leadership. Uh, to this world, there are democratic leaders, there are uh, dictatorship, there are uh, monarch kind of leaders, there are participative kind of leaders, there are laser affairs kind of leaders, you know, and we also talk about the Jesus Christ kind of leadership that starts with love, compassion, you know, show that compassion, show that love. So there are different, different kind of leadership, you know, but the one that we are interested and in, we are talking about today is not democratic the government kind of leadership where they vote people into office. You know, we are talking about the leadership that starts with you. You taking responsibility, you knowing what to do, and you doing them. You know, you doing them. Not after maybe everybody might have begged you to do what you are supposed to do. No, you doing the right thing at the right time. In leadership, time is of the essence. Time is very very important. Time is very very important. You you don't want to be a leader a leader that. They normally push to do what you're supposed to do. They beg you. They, they have to coerce you. They have to, they have to ginger you. 
before you are you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. That's not an effective leader. That is still a baby kind of leadership. Where they have to beg you, they have to uh, pamper you, they have to push you, they have to caress you, they have to say the things that you want to hear, you know, in your ear before you now do what you are supposed to do, you know. Then that person is not matured leaders. Again. It's still a baby kind of leadership. So a leader is somebody who does take his responsibility and do it at the right time for the right purpose. The right time for the right. Remember, even if you do it for the right time, for the wrong purpose, it's still not complete. So it has to be responsibility has to be there to define a proper leadership. Responsibility has to be there. The timing has to be there, and the purpose at which you do it has to be there, because Jesus Christ says, He said. Everything will be tested. Even the purpose of you to lead the people will be tested. You can, you can deceive the people, but you cannot deceive God. And leadership, you cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive the Holy Spirit. So the purpose must be checked so that the purpose will not be wrong. Because if the purpose at which you are doing what you do is wrong, there will be conflict at the end of the day. And God is not an author of conflict. So he wants you to check the purpose even from the beginning. Before you do anything, check the purpose at which you are doing it. What Of what purpose are we doing this leadership course? We have said it during the orientation class. Of what purpose is to make man full, matured, with all the revelation of God, wanting nothing, that he may be able to perform and operate in that office God has called him or her. That is the essence of this course. To every man, to every minister, every leader, every pastor, come of age. You know, come of age to that, to that office, to that assignment, to that knowledge that God has called him into and to begin to operate in that office functionally, successfully, faithfully, committed in that assignment God has called you. That is the essence. You know, yes. If you want to start a church, you start a church. If God has called you to serve in any other church, you can join any other church. But as long as you have been able to undertake this course, then you are a, you are a man full of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. You don't lack nothing. You know the purpose at which you, are, you have gone through this course. And you have done it selflessly. And God will increase. So everything, everything needs the purpose. You need to know a purpose why you do what you do as a leader. Purpose, the timing. Timing is of, of, of essence. God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach in Nineveh. You know, Jonah did not go to Nineveh. Jonah told God that he's not going to go to Nineveh, that those people are too wicked, that they will not listen to him. You know, God, so God has to, Jonah has to be swallowed by a fish. So, so we don't want to be that kind of leader that has to be swallowed before we do what we are supposed to do. You know, so we want to be that kind of leader that when we, when we, when, when we know our responsibility, it doesn't matter God gives us responsibility, and our pastors give us responsibility, and our spouse gives us responsibility, and our children give us responsibility, and our place of work gives us responsibility. As long as you know that this is what I'm supposed to do, and it's clear, you do it at the right time and for the right purpose, for the right mindset. This is what defines godly kind of leadership. This is what defines leadership in the eyes of God. Now, let's look at uh, qualities of a leader. Some people say leaders are born. Some people say leaders are made. Some people say leaders are created. Some people say leaders are, uh, leaders are, you know, there are different qualities of a leader. One of them is character. A leader must have good character, must be of good character. A leader must not be found wanting uh, in any area that you have been called or you have, you've had your assignment or leadership purpose. A leader must who has strong spiritual character. And strong spiritual character comes from strong knowledge of the word of God. And how do we build strong spiritual character? It's by applying those things that we have heard. Apostle Paul was telling young Timothy, he said, that which you have heard from me and other ministers, he said, teach them also to all, also to faithful, other faithful believers. So this is where characters are formed. When you, when you hear something and you practice it, without practicing it, characters are not formed. Characters are formed when you put them to practice. We also mentioned it in our uh, personal spiritual growth. One of the process of growth is practice. 
It's practice. You have to practice what you, so that's what build character over the time. But a leader must be somebody who has good character. Must be somebody who is who has a good character. A leader must be somebody who has values. Do we what values do we have? What value drives us? What is our what are our spiritual values? What are our human values? What are our moral values? Do we have moral values? Do we have spiritual values? Do you value spiritual things? Do you have the fear of God? The fear of God, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. It's the fear of God that drives spiritual values. You know? So let's, let's, let leaders ask that one of some of the qualities of a leader is character and values, godly values, uh, physical value, moral values. So you must have values as a, as, a, as a child of God, as a leader, as a good leader. Then commitment. Yeah. The leader must be committed. You know, there are many qualities, but we just want to, uh, because of our time and because of uh, order of importance, we just want to restrict it to these three for now. But as you go through the book, we are going to make the book available. Uh, this book is going to be available to all students, free of charge. Uh, this book is going to be available to all students, free of charge. I'm going to, I'm going to post it here uh, before the end of the class going to be available to all students free of charge. So uh, we are going to get a copy. Everyone is going to get a copy of this book free of charge. It's courtesy of the school. The school is giving out this book free of charge. Uh, so you are going to get it. This book, can you see it on the screen? So it's a book. It's about uh, 300 pages. Uh, we are going to make a, a hard copy. I'm talking about the hard copy. It's going to be available free of charge. We already sent it uh, yes. as a PDF. We are going to have a Hard copy of it. So you are also going to see more of those qualities there. They are also there. Many of them are there. So you can yeah. read up and have them. So we are giving it out free of charge. It's not today we are giving it out. To. We are giving that on the day of graduation. So if everyone assists this the course to the end so on the graduation day of graduation, it's going to be in your pack. Your in your pack is going to be among them. So about three books are going to be there. This is just one of them. You are going to also get books from Dr. Esther. You're also going to get books from uh, Pastor Jerry, other teachers that are going to come. They are going to give you the books, their books free of charge. So you're going to have books inside the pack. So please ginger yourself, sing ginger yourself to, to see to the finish line. Amen. Praise God. So some say leaders are born, some say leaders are made, some say leaders are created, some say leaders. Now, this is this is this is our thoughts. These are our thoughts uh, in this class. Either you are born or you are created, though, or that you are, you are, you, you jump down from sky. Oh. Every leader that are leader in the eyes of God must have these things, these things that make them leader. Number one, a leader must be able to pray. Please, if you are writing, please write them down. Very, very important. These are the things that makes a good leader. Not whether some leaders are born, leaders are because God can use anybody and anybody is useful in the house of God. Imagine God using Obedidon, somebody who was, uh, who was an outcast, who was, a, who was a poor, wretched, somebody who, who was not, who the society does not even identify with. Imagine God using Jethro, Jethro of all people. So, to, to save his own tribe, Jethro of all people, Jethro who, 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 who's, who's, whose mother was, was somebody who was said to be an, uh, uh, somebody who was said to be somebody who they cannot identify with, you know, who has a, a, a family history, you know. So imagine God, so if God can use these people, that means everybody in the eyes of God is important. So a leader must be able to pray. Number one, we've, I've written that. Yeah. A leader must be able to select other leaders. Please, let's write it. A leader must be able to see leadership qualities in others. You must be, as a, one of the things that makes you a good leader is you must be able to see the leadership quality, you know, prayerfully see leadership qualities in other people. Then number three, a leader must be able to what? Make the mission or the vision or the plan or whatever it is that is committed to your hand, make it 
open to everyone. A leader must be able to open it. Let the plan be open. Open the open up the plan. What 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 are the goals? What are we going to achieve? A leader must be able to make this plan open. Open the plan. Then number five. One two three four. Be number four. A leader must be able to build other people. A leader must be a people builder. You must not be a people destroyer. Either you are born a leader, or either you make yourself a leader, either you just find yourself in the leadership position. Or these four things must be common, must be important. So if you don't have them, you can go and develop them now. You can go and learn them now. You can go and start to pray about them now. You must be able to pray. A leader, because in the in the bow in the spiritual bow well of a leader, visions and ideas and missions are released. So it is it is as a leader, as a spiritual leader. I'm talking about spiritual leaders now. Leaders in pastors, uh, bishops, evangelists, apostles. For you to lead successfully, you need to be able to bat, hear, and see and know. From the realm of the spirit, you need to be able to download the revelation from the realm of the spirit through prayer. You, there, there's need for connectivity to the heavenlies. Connectivity and prayer is that that way that connects. So it must be there. For other kind of leaders, maybe a parent. As a parent, you are a leader. As a boy, you are a leader. As a girl, you are a leader. As a child, you are a leader. As a person, you are a leader. Do not think that because they've not started celebrating you now or you, have not, you don't have your office now or you don't have a big car now or a big congregation now that you're not a leader. No. Even, even as, you, as we are right now, people are looking up to you. Well, you might not know. People are looking up to you one way or the other. I tell you, do not ever think that somebody is not looking up to you. Somebody is always looking up to you. It does not matter if only you are the only person in your room or the only person in your house or the only child in your family. Somebody somewhere is looking up to you. That is why you must heed the word of God. That is why you must download from heaven. That is why you must be able to say, okay, this is what God is saying I should do. This is what the plants are now. And this is what I, I must do. So you must be able to select other leaders. You must be able to make the vision plain that everyone that sees it to run with it. You must be able to, you know, build other people. Praise Those are God. the things that makes you a leader. Praise God. Praise Amen. One of the things that a leader must do, you were talking about what makes a good leader. Now, these are the things that a leader must do. Now, we understand that spiritual gifts are what are given. But fruit of the spirit are cultivated. A leader must cultivate the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Who can who can who can um, who can tell us some of the fruit of the spirit? Who can just name them? Can you name some of the, anybody can who knows the fruit of the spirit? Just let's name them. Love. Love. Peace. Peace. Patient. Patient. Long suffering. Long suffering. Endurance. Endurance. Yeah. And, and I also add integrity. Self-control. Self-control. So these are the fruit of the spirit. So a leader must be able to what? Cultivate the fruit of the spirit. What do you mean by cultivate? You mean to grow in them. Like we said before, uh, spiritual growth is a process. Leadership is also a process. We need to grow in this. So we need to cultivate them. To sharpen them, to bring them to the to the place that we can use them effectively in every ministry God has given to us. If God has given you a music ministry, know that you need all these things, because people will people. Will, if you pray, oh Lord, give me give me the power to love, give me the power to love. God will send people who you who will annoy you. So you need the capacity to love them. Yes. My sister is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That is how it is, my dear. That is how we must be able to tell each other the truth. <laughs> God will send people to you that you you really, by the time you finish loving them, you will not ask yourself, how, how did I now become friends with you? How was this? How is this impossible? This person, that sometimes when I see this person, I feel like coming from here, I feel like going out through this place. 
<laughs> you but something something will build up in you and you will just decide that hmm, god has answered your prayer you prayed and god wanted to know what love is and god showed you so you you, you will know love so leaders must be able to cultivate this fruit of the spirit is they must if you want to be a good leader an effective leader it's a must Number two, what makes a good, what makes a good leader? A leader must be committed. Somebody say commitment. Commitment. A leader must be committed. You can't. The Bible says it, it is not of the kingdom of God, of the children of God, to put their hands on the plow and look back. No, you don't put your hands on the plow on the kingdom of God and look back. No, you must be committed. You are not Christian today. Uh, we don't know what you are tomorrow, or you are a father today. Uh, tomorrow you are looking for. We have to carry your children to go and dump them. No. Once you are a father, you are a mother, you are a father. Don't be looking for somebody that will always be looking for somebody that will help you take care of your children. Why? No. You have to be responsible. Yeah, that's, you know, there are, there are some parenting that we see these days and we just wonder, say, what God, what God have mercy. You know, you, 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 you. Responsibility. You, you, no, yes, nobody, they don't want to take responsibility. That's what we talk about in the force. That leadership is responsibility. People don't want to take responsibility. And they, they are going to be the first person to point accusing finger at any, anything. No, that is not good leadership. Good leadership is taking responsibility of the things that are available that are made for you to take responsibility. That makes it a good leader. As a parent, you need to be responsible for your children. Psalms chapter 124. He said, he said, children are the gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is the reward. They are, so we are, they are a reward from God. We have to, we are caregivers. We have to give them that care. It's a must. Mm-hmm. The Bible says a man who, who is not able to fend his family is worse than an infidel. You, need, you, 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 you don't have to steal, but because God has given them a blessing unto you and their reward, God will make a way. But you need to be strong. That's what we are saying. You need to be sound mentally. You need, you need to be able to hear from God to say, oh, God, what do I do? This is what I do to fend for my family. So it starts that way. You don't have to be a pastor or a bishop or a reverend before you before you, you, know, you take up relationship. But no. God has said to you today that you are a leader where you are. You are a leader where you are. It does not matter whether they give you position or not, whether you have been given that appointment or not. You are a leader. That's one of the things that this course makes people to understand. It makes everyone to understand that I am a leader. In as such, I must take my responsibility seriously. I must take my, where I have not been taking my responsibility seriously, you are going to ask for forgiveness from God. It's a sin. Not to take your responsibility seriously and be responsible for that which has been committed into your hand because it will be required of you. If a minute, if it's if, a, if the choir department has been committed into your hand, God will require the sources of that choir ministry in from you. If the ushering ministry has been committed into your hand, God will require the activity of that ushering ministry in your hand. If the whole church has been committed into your hand, God will require the activity of that church in your hand, of the life of those people in your hand. So you have to be committed. You have to be responsible. So commitment is a no negotiation for a leader, for a good leader. A commitment is not a good leader. Then number, number three, a leader must be motivated. Somebody say motivation. Motivation. <laughs> A leader must be motivated. We have to be motivated as leaders. A leader must run from negative people. We need to run far from negative people. Run far from them. A leader must avoid procrastination. A leader must avoid procrastination. What is this? Procrastination. I will do it later. Do it today, tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I will do it when I I will do it when I come back. Or oh, I, I will do it when I come from travel. You procrastinate the things you are supposed to do right now. You 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 want to you want to trade it because of temporary comfort. 
for sometimes for sometimes later. A leader must avoid procrastination. A leader must avoid excuses. We are still talking about number number uh, number three commitments. A leader must avoid excuses. A leader must avoid the spirit of laziness. Are we writing? Yes. A leader must avoid laziness. Leading, laziness leads to covetousness. You know how laziness leads to covetousness. Once you are not able to, the, uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it says, the lazy man says there is a lion outside, outside the farm. You know, when he says there is a lion outside the farm, he doesn't want to go to the farm. That's what he means. He doesn't want to go and cultivate his farm. <laughs> there's a well, lion. It's rain. I can't yes, there's, there's, there's so much today. There's the snow and the storm. The, 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 the snow is too much today. Mm. You know, so you don't you, you 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 want to be lazy to yourself. You want to you want mm. to relax. Mm. And when somebody when somebody has gone to work, the weather. yeah, the weather is bad. When somebody has gone to work yeah. that day, every month the person is going to work. Every day is going to snow to work. When at the end of the month, when they pay that person, you not go and meet that person. Ah, brother, can you can you borrow me urgent urgent uh, two hundred euro from your hand? Okay. Can I please get urgent one hundred euro? You know, so we need to avoid all those covetousness, putting your eyes on somebody else property or somebody else um, resources, somebody else well, somebody else hard work. It's laziness that causes that. God has given us the wisdom. He said he has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of love, of boldness and of sound mind. Amen. So he has not given us the spirit of fear. Yeah. So, let's, let's not so a leader, a good leader must avoid lazy. A good leader must avoid Unhealthy comparison, unhealthy comparison. Begin to compare members or compare children. Oh, don't you see this one? Your brother is better than you. Your sister is faster than you. Your sister is better. No, don't. That's unhealthy comparison. Don't do it. If you have been doing it before, please stop it. A leader must avoid unhealthy comparison. Don't compare. God has given everyone different grace for different assignments. All you do is to see the good part of them and encourage them to grow. Yeah. Don't, don't go into unhealthy comparison. A leader must work. Not go into unhealthy competition. Don't be competing yeah. with yourself. You know, I've seen so many people who are competing with somebody they're supposed to be learning from. You know, somebody you're supposed to be learning from, you're competing with that person. Don't you know that person is the person that's already signed his own destruction warrant? So you avoid un unhealthy competition, unnecessary and unhealthy competition. If somebody knows more than you in one area, go and meet that person. Say, oh, I, I, brother, I like, I like what you do. Yeah, I like what you do. Can you show me? Can you tell me how you do it? Oh, can you? You go ask. You go ask people. You go ask people. Say, how? How do you do this? How do you do this? Well, I saw you did this thing online. I saw the way you designed this thing. I saw the way you spoke about this one. I saw the way you touched this thing. Uh, you, they will explain to you. You don't. So avoid. A leader must be able to make his mind settled that oh, I want to, I want to get better. For the, for the purpose, you know, we talked about purpose, a purpose of leadership. Remember, we talked about the purpose at which you do what you do. So all these things will tell if the purpose is wrong. If the purpose is right, there's nothing stopping you from going to meet somebody who is better than you and say, ah, show me how you did these things, how you did you do these things. And the, and the grace of God is always available to show us all things. Yeah. So a leader must ignore, you know, uh, a leader, like we said, a leader must ignore unnecessary distractions. Yeah. yeah. Leader must avoid unnecessary distractions. Unnecessary because as a leader, uh, there are so many things that will come. There are so many people, there are so many uh, responsibilities, there are so many things that will come. You have to know what is right and what, uh, what is priority, what is not to be given um, so much priority. We saw, uh, we saw that in the book of uh, uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, in the book of Exodus, why Jethro, uh, David's father, um, I said David, uh, Moses' father-in-law was encouraging Moses and was advising Moses. He said, you are going to kill yourself with all these things that you are doing. He said to Moses, he said, why not set up me? It's not everything that you are going to go and uh, set to go to go and they call you for everything they call you for. Uh, Moses here, Moses there. And he said to Moses, appoint men. Appoint other leaders and let those leaders also appoint other leaders who are going to be in charge of those small, small things. 
Don't let everything distract you. You concentrate on hearing from God. Why let them concentrate on the matters of the people? Do you understand? That is a leadership style that we copied from, that we learned from. So don't let little, little everything distract you. Don't let every uncommon thing distract you. Learn to set people to be responsible for other things. Learn to prayerfully trust people. A leader must be somebody who trusts people. Uh, I've seen so many teachers, I've seen so many pastors when we are teaching on these things, they said, ah, I, I can't trust anybody again. I trusted somebody with uh, uh, one self-fellowship. I gave somebody one self-fellowship to manage. The person converted the self-fellowship to the same church. I gave somebody this church to manage. I have three churches or four churches. I gave somebody. You, can't... you know you know, you know, know what we normally say, say most times? What we normally say is, this is the church of God. Nobody can carry the church of God anymore. If God has given you that church for you to be an overseer, it will surely be. But if it's not for you, it will surely go. So you don't have to kill yourself, say somebody, no, because you are afraid that somebody was going to carry the church. And so because of that, you don't trust anybody. And you don't want to trust anybody. You are going to be doing yourself more harm at the end of the day. Because of my experience, I've decided not to trust anybody. But there's also not, there's nowhere in the Bible that says, that God says you should trust your friend. He said, trust me and love your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, the trust, I, me, I don't trust anybody again, especially Nigerians, <laughs> for, for what I have experienced. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's what we're talking about. That's that's what we're teaching about. You need so to. So you are being trained now. Yeah, that's why you are being trained. That's why you are going through this class. That's why you are knowing what you know today. Uh, I thank God for it. Thank, thank God. God because because we cannot no one you, you cannot do it alone. You see this work of God. We cannot do it alone. We always need people. We always need. Imagine Jesus Christ called twelve. I'm among the whole twelve. One person betrayed him. We did Jesus. Did yeah. Jesus we Jesus Christ say, ah, because ah, this person is going to be, I ah, know, no. no he had only he had one, to, the Hoover Peter. Yeah, he had, he had to do what he had to do. You see, yeah. you see, that, 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 that kingdom of God, that kingdom of God supersedes every other kingdom. Yes. There are, in this race of life, this race of leadership, there are going to be betrayers along the road. And so those people are going to teach you a lesson. You see, when, when those things does not happen, faith will not grow in you. Uh-uh. Those things happen that you will have faith in God. Trust in God. Yeah, right. That's yeah. Good. yeah. It will bring you back to faith. So everything that happens, happens for your faith to grow. It does not matter that good or bad. One thing you will learn from it is that you will learn your faith to grow towards God. Yeah. Sometimes people might take everything that you have and you will realize that all that you have is only God. Yes. So that is why we must not allow distractions. Uh, somebody wants to take it, let him take it. Let him, he wants to, wants to let him carry it. It's God's work. It cannot be, you see, the, the assignment God has given to you is, will always be in your heart. Yes. And nobody can take that. Nobody can take that. Nobody, as long as you are truthful and you are sincere, the assignment God has given to you, the responsibility to do that assignment is always in your heart. And nobody can take that. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit is always very important in leadership. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let's look at the attitude of a leader. Let's look quickly. Our time is fast spent. The attitude of a leader. We have to talk about what the leader, the characteristics of a leader. Let's look about the attitude of a leader. Uh, number one, a leader must have a master mentality. Please write it down. You need to write that. It's very, very important. A leader must have a master mentality. A master mentality. A, a master, or you can write a positive mentality. A leader must have a master mentality. What do you mean by a leader must have a master mentality? Now, these are what happens. When, once, once you go to learn a work from an, from an apprentice and you go and learn a work from a master, that's why we use the word here, master mentality. 
what, what you do that period of time, maybe you are doing us be doing, you are doing the training, is that you will be learning the things that you want to learn. You'll be learning those things that God has called you to go and learn. You'll be learning those things that, that, will, be, that will be useful to you. You're learning those things that you need to do for your profession, for your ministry. It doesn't matter what, for whatever purpose at which you are learning that thing. The thing, you will learn them over a period of time. Now, now, over a period of time, you will see that sometimes even your master will make mistakes. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes your master, your our parents, sometimes when we grow of age, by the time we begin to have sense, sometimes we know that our parents make mistakes. Oh, this is <laughs> oh yes. So, so you, you begin to notice that uh, even our leaders, yes. our leaders, in the body of Christ, even our leaders in the church, they make mistakes because yes. they are human beings. Now, this is the reason why we ask us to have a, 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 um, a, a successful a leadership mentality. Now, as a leader, if you have a failure mentality, you are already a, a risk to that, to that leadership school or to that leadership class or to that family or to that group or to that association. Mm -hmm. You're already a risk. Because whatever you think, whatever you do, whatever you plan, because you already have a, a, a wrong motive or a, a, a risk factor, something, something that would tell that, oh, maybe I will fail. That person will not be operating at the, at the, at the position or at the, at the strength at which God has given to you. Because we have not been given the spirit of fear. So any, anybody that is a leader or that wants to go into a leadership position, they already have harboring fear. In his or her mind, how will this church grow? How will this company grow? Ah, how will I fend for these children? Ah, will I be able to take care of these children? Ah, will I fail these children? Or what will happen to this school? Will I be able to complete this school? Or what if I fail along the road? You already have, have boring that thought, that imagination, and those things begin to play. That person is already a risk. So a leader must have a well, master mentality means you know that this thing must be done. However it needs to be done, it will be done. Either I fail, or I rub on the ground, or I roll on the ground, or as long as we get to the finish line. That's a master mentality. Along the line, you might fail. Along the line, you might, you might make error. You correct yourself. You keep going. That's a mental uh, master mentality. You know that this thing, we need to master it so that we can get better at it. So that's the mentality of a, lead, of a good leader. You need to have that attitude, that mental mentality, that master mentality, that these things must be done and must be done in this way and in this order, in this place. In doing them, you might make mistakes, you might fall, you might but believe me not, it's better for you to have a positive mentality than to have a negative or a failure mentality. Because a leader with a failure mentality is already a risk. Are we, are we, are we, are we clear on that? Yeah. And, and fear makes leaders irrational. Fear begins to make leaders irrational. Excuse me, sir. I have yes, a question. Sir. Yes. Okay. You said a leader's counsel made mistake. Yes. It doesn't mean that he's not a leader. It doesn't mean that it's not a leader. Nobody's perfect. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, these are the attitude of a leader. Now let's go to uh, what a leader must do. What a leader must do. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. What a leader must do. Oh, Lord, help us today. Lord, help us today to finish. Which chapter again? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. First Timothy 5, 8. And another person can open James chapter 5, verse 13, verse 17. James chapter... James 5, verse 17. Elijah was a man with a nature like we have, and we prayed, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, 
and it did not rain on the land for three three years and six months. Amen. Elijah, yes, James chapter five verse. Elijah was a man like you and I. So Elijah was a man like you. And what does that? What does? What is? What is he trying to say to us? What is yeah. it like? that, that both that both function in an area uh, of functioning? Thank you, sir. I mean, Elijah was a man like you and I. He has fears. He has blood running his vein. He has yes. mistakes. He has. He has. He has. He's, he's connected to heaven. He knows God. He knows who he's serving. Elijah ate food like us. Elijah was born like you and I. Elijah was a man too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he so, but he had that capacity to pray to. To connect with heaven, to to move things in the realm of the spirit. So that's what he's saying to us that you and I, a leaders must know that we are we are human beings. Okay, we are not spirit. We have spirit inside of us, but we are not spirit. We are human being. Please let every leader know that we are human being. Don't begin to see yourself as uh, a spirit. I begin to mislead others. I begin to mislead. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we, are, we are human being. We have the spirit of God to help us when we are weak, when we are tired, when we are struggling, when we are not sure, when we want to fall into doubt or we want to fall in insecurity. We have the spirit of God, to, but we are human beings. Let's not put ourselves in the place of El Shaddai. We are not El Shaddai or else we shall die. You are human beings. If you want to make yourself El Shaddai, then the person is signing his death warrant. So we are not El Shaddai. We are just the children of God. So we are human beings. So that is why this Bible says Elijah was a man like us, with like mind like us, with everything like us. So please know that as a leader, you are human being. Somebody else, um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. I can read it for you. Yes, go ahead. If anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he has de denied the faith and is worse than a unbeliever and an unbeliever. So what is that saying to us? It is that as a leader, we must be able to be re take responsibility. What a leader must do, a leader must take responsibility, he must be responsible. A leader must be responsible. A leader must know that he's a human being and a leader must be responsible. Please, I beg you all, everyone listening to me here and watching this program or going to be watching in the future, please be responsible in whatever God has committed into your hand. It does not matter how big it is or how small it is, but be responsible at it. Do it as if you are doing it unto God and not unto man. Amen. Then a, leader must, a, leader must, a leader must dedicate his time, resources, and all that he has to make the vision work. A leader must be able to make a vision work. What a leader must do? Make a vision work. A leader must be able to make a vision work. What a leader must do? A leader must make a vision work. A leader must be able to focus. Somebody say focus. Focus. A leader must be able to focus. 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 Very, very important. A leader must be able to focus. How do we focus? Focus means use your time well. Focus means to use your time very well. Mm -hmm. Be effective in your timing. You must be effective in your timing. You must use your time well. Focus means you must find your quiet time. You must find your quiet time. <clears throat> find your quiet time. What does uh, focus mean? Focus means you must acknowledge to do your best. You must acknowledge to do your best. Focus means you must keep record. A, a leader must keep record. You keep record of your 
activities, what you have done, a leader must keep record. A good leader must keep record. And a good leader must ask for help when necessary. A good leader must ask for help when necessary. Very, very important. Let's talk about challenges. Does leaders face challenges? Oh, man. <laughs> Amen. So challenges will come. Amen. Challenges will come. So what? Let's let's read First Samuel, chapter thirty, verse eight. Hmm? Yeah, man. First Samuel, chapter thirty, verse eight. First Samuel. <laughs> Verse, uh, chapter 30. Oh, that's Verse 8. How to, how to deal with challenges. Yeah. For someone, then another person can open First Chronicles 4.10. Let's, let's what? read First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. First, um, First Samuel chapter, chapter four. And that's it. That's the prayer yeah. of Jabez. Yeah. But let's read for Samuel. Let's read the only one because of our time. Okay. For Samuel 30, verse 8. You know how to how to stand because challenges will come. But because those challenges, those challenges will grow as leaders. Can yes. anybody read for Samuel chapter 30, verse 8? And David consulted the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this, after these truths, will I overtake them? And he answered him, pursued, for you will certainly over, overtake them and without fear, without fear, recover all. Amen. That was talking about how, yeah, that was talking about, you know that story there, David, when David was attacked, uh, his young man, his family, his men, his men and his family were attacked. All his family were taken hostage in Ziglag. You know, so they, and you know, it was a time for trial. It was a great time of tribulation for him. It was a time for, and he was a leader, but he was tried. You know, so as a leader, we are letting us to know that how do we overcome challenge? We must almost always look to God. That's why I said prayer are one of the things leaders must do. You know, you need to connect to God. You need to always consult God in what you do as a leader. So David was challenged. They showed that this, this was an example of how challenges came to even a great leader as David. Challenges came to him. His own family, his own wife and children, and the wife of his leaders and his and his uh, and his and all his captains were taken as hostage. His house burned and raised to the ground, and he cried and they wept and they wanted to kill him. That look at what you have done. So sometimes as a leader you face even challenges from the people you are leading. Remember Moses at the edge of the Red Sea. They said, why have you brought us here to, put, to kill us? Yeah? Now you want us, there, there are no graves even here to bury our dead bodies. You know, and they said, and they, and they sought to stone Moses. So as a leader, even as a parent, sometimes our children will rise up. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will come directly against us. It happens. We are human beings. We cannot, sometimes our boss, sometimes our spouse, sometimes somebody that you love the most, sometimes our parents, sometimes our friend, sometimes our friend will just, you know, come up with something that's, that, is, <laughs> that is totally awkward. Sometimes those that love you the most, sometimes those that are close to you the most will, will give you the, the, the worst form of temptation. You know, so, but how was he able to manage it? He said he consulted on God. He had, he had the knowledge that there's a God who knows all things. That who sees him because his mind was pure. That is why the Bible says, the, 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 uh, said, said my, my heart is pure to those whose heart are pure. He said, but my heart is corrupt to those whose heart are corrupt. That's why I said everything flows from the heart. I said it earlier on. Once you are faithful and you are true and you, are, you trust God and you know the God that you serve, there is nothing that about people that you cannot trust trust in the hand of God, because your hand is pure. But there is always be bad people. If you say you want to decision because of there are people have hurt you in the past, you will not 
be able to deal with anybody. Nobody will be your friend. You don't have anybody. But if you trust God, just as David trusted God, yeah, and God said, pursue, overtake, and recover. If that church is your own, if that assignment is your own, if that business is your own, God will give you double. You will, you will recover more. Challenges will come. I, I won't lie to you and stay here and tell you uh, uh, everything is just going to be rosy as a leader. No. People are going to test you from every area. <laughs> For even, I tell you today, people, are, people that are close to you that are going to test you the most. People that are closest to you. But you must remember that as a leader, every arrow comes to you. Every arrow, every jumps to you. But you must know that you have a God who you can always call on to. Who can always show you the way out. You have somebody you can rely on, just as David relied on God here, even in the time of trouble and challenge. As a leader, how do we overcome challenges? We have to learn to listen, learn to listen and learn to wait on the Lord. The first one, we saw how David called upon God. We don't need to learn to call upon God. Then we need to learn to listen and learn to wait on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is a very big sign of a good leader. It's not every leader or every pastor, or every man of God that can wait on the Lord, that can wait to hear from God. It's a very, very, very good thing to learn to do if you can do it. Very good thing to learn to do. Sometimes a leader must need to learn to think outside the box. What, what do I mean by that? A leader must be innovative. Don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to tell you what to do. I remember the first time, I remember the first time I heard the Holy Spirit said I should give a church 100,000 naira. I remember the first time, many years ago, the Holy Spirit told me to give a church 100,000 naira. And I, 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 I looked back when I didn't, I didn't see who was talking to me. I said, I rebuke you, Satan. I said to myself, I rebuke Satan. But God was telling me to sow 100,000 naira into a fellowship. So a church, one, one fellowship, one church fellowship. I was rebuking it. You know? So, so you are very, very rich. He said? I said, so you are very, very rich. No, I'm <laughs> you said 100,000. Yeah, 100,000 naira. I mean naira, not euro. <laughs> I'm just joking anyway. <laughs> yes, we are all rich in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. So it, 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 um, we need to learn to listen to God. It's very important for a leader. Leader must learn to think outside the box. You must be innovative. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Don't be, don't be caught in the box all the time. Be, be somebody who is open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can, he can use the, the Holy Spirit that told, uh, that told uh, uh, Naaman to go, and, uh, to go and jump inside Jordan. Was, was the one that asked another prophet to go and lie on the child that's dead. So it, it must not be all the time the... The, the, the solution will be go and jump inside Jordan. You must learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. It's, it's dy- Holy Spirit is dynamic in nature. It's, it's innovative. It's not, one, it's not always one-sided. You, you, so you, we, we need to always, you know, uh, a leader must not be able to judge, you know, judge everything that he sees I just on the face, face value, and what I mean by what you see, don't judge by only what you see, what you just see, just quickly judge, you know, you have to be able to hear, you have to be able to relax and brood over it again and ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding before you judge or else you'll just be judging wrongly and jumping from one challenge to the other and God is not an orthodox confusion, so you must be able to be able to hear from God, don't judge at face value, whatever somebody just tell you, just judge, you know, hear from the other part, hear from the other part, if, if there is need, call for witnesses. A leader must be able to be, be, able to be matured. You know? A leader must be able to go out of his way to help others. That's one of the challenges of a leader. Don't just be comfortable alone, just sit down and comfortable. Go out of your way to help others. Don't say, ah, that place is too far from my place of work. That place is too far from, me. ah, I can't, I can't. Oh, and you know that that family is going through challenge. They are going through too much. And you and the Lord has asked you to go and visit them and pray with that family. They are fighting, they want to kill each other. The, the harm is going to happen in that place if you don't go. You say, Oh, 
Oh, ah, you must be able to go out of your comfort zone to help other people. It's a challenge. That's what leaders do. A leader must be able to have what? A change. A, a leader must be able to be filled with gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. A leader must be able to be filled with attitude of gratitude. Be always be, uh, be, be anticipated that God has answered those, those petitions and be, be grateful ahead. Even if you have not seen them answer physically, be grateful that knowing that God will make all things come to pass for you. So that's the positive mindset we mentioned earlier as for leaders. You know, a leader must, must not allow the worry to be cloud his face. Don't carry all your, all your challenge on your face. Uh, everybody knows that, ah, uh, your land has given you quick, uh, Kundigun, your landlord has given you quick notice. Don't carry it on your face. So everybody that see you must know that, ah, uh, you are carrying worry. No, that's not the sign of a good leader. That is, that is, uh, what, what do we call that? That is, uh, that is, uh, that is a moral blackmail. A leader must not use his attitude to morally blackmail his people or those people following him or those people around him. Don't, don't be caught in that. Don't be, use your attitude to morally blackmail your spouse or your people around you or your children or your church members or your people around you. Don't do that. Don't carry, only you carry all your worry on your face. Ah, ah, no, ah, no, ah, no. no. Everybody has what they are going through. Be cheerful. The Bible says a merry heart does good to the bone as medicine. You know, carry a merry heart. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Learn to be cheerful. The God that allowed the challenge to come your way knows, knows you knows before you were born and knows it's for a reason, for a purpose. Amen. You need to learn to trust the process. A leader must be able to find his or her spark. Find your spark. Find what works for you. Find what works for you. What is it that works for you? What is it that keeps you going? Elia must be able to find and know what works for you. You know, so a leader must be able to look inward. A leader must look inward from time to time. You have to look inward. Look, in, look what, what do you gain from, from following what you do, from the assignment you do? Look inward. What, what have I learned from this disappointment? What have I learned from this from this, uh, from this expression? What have I learned from this assignment, from this goal? What have I learned from this mission? You must be able to look inward from time to time. Elam must look inward to learn, okay, how have I grown spiritually? You must be able to, be able to recount your spiritual reward for what you do. First and, first and most important is your spiritual reward. You must be able to know where you have grown, what God has said to you, and how you have applied them and what it has led you to. Maybe it has led you to faith, increase in prayer life, increase in your commitment, increase in your giving, increase in your trust, <laughs> your love. Those things must grow in you. So a leader must be able to look inward. You know, uh, sometimes the reward might be long life. Sometimes the reward might be good. What are the rewards for fasting? Apart from the spiritual uh, connect connectivity to heaven. You know, fasting helps our health. It improves our health, you know. So those are the things you must look. You know, what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the blessings when you when you when you when you give when you sow? What are, what 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 happens? What happens? What 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 happens to you when you sow? When you sow on the on the fertile ground? So you must look inward. You must know that God, God, I love you, and I am sowing into you because of the love I have for you. So you must look inward. You know, knowing that ah, your love for God, because you saw your love of God has increased. So you must know all these things. And then you must look outwards. A leader must look outwards. How has your life affected people positively? A leader must look at how, how has your life affected? Somebody want to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Please, can you expatiate on, on what you said before, before this? Uh, look inwards. You mean like spiritual so blessing? Not, uh, like giving. Sowing a seed. Yes, when you sow a seed, yeah. You know, uh, sow a seed. Sow this seed. Yeah, when you sow a seed, it means when you when you help somebody who is in need, you are sowing a seed. When you pray for somebody, you are sowing a seed. When you give somebody your time to listen to the person, you know, you share with somebody. Somebody is... That's all. Okay. You mean you, Jesus, 
Jesus is that seed. You should sow it in somebody. Yeah. I think what it means. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can sow. You can also sow a seed also in terms of giving. What's your substance that you have? Physical mm -hmm. substance. You can also sow a seed of giving. Maybe money. Maybe clothes that you are not wearing again. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe shoe that you are not wearing again. You sow into the life of somebody or ministry. You know. So you know that ah, you, then your love increases. It increases your love for God. Ah, God, I love you so much. You to sow into the life of somebody else. You understand? Increase your love, increase your, you know, that motivation. That like, yes, you know, because it's it's love that drives you to do whatever you do. Yeah, so, right. so then you look also look outwards. You look outwards. How as has your life affected other people positively? I mean, how has the light that you carry affected other people around you? The light, have they have they also seen the light? Are they are they also walking in the light? I mean, um, what oh. what is it that you are doing that? That you can do better that will affect other people positively in letting them know God or have fellowship with God or have close relationship with God, you know. So you have to look out what how many souls, how many souls have you won? How many people have you spoken the good news to? You know, the good news of the Bible. How many so you have to look at how many people have you have you impacted with the message of Christ? You know, so you have to look at those things. You know, you have to look at uh, other accomplishments like uh, are you a blessing to the nation? Are you a blessing to the city? You know, do you pray on the city? Do you go around laying hands on the city, praying for the goodness, for security, for, for jobs, for, you know, for protection for the city? You no, know, you need to know how you have affected the nation and the city and the environment God has placed you positively, you know? Uh, finally, uh, praise God. A leader must make his assignment fun. You have to make your assignment fun. You have to love what you do. I've seen, I've seen so many leaders, so many people they don't they they are they so they allow they allow the 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 pressure of what they do to overwhelm them that they don't even find joy in what they do. Uh, it's it's so so pathetic as a leader, as a father, as a parent, that you don't you don't find joy being a parent to your children anymore. You don't find joy being uh being a leader, being a leader in your in your cell in your cell fellowship, you don't find joy being a member of a family because of maybe somebody said something concerning you or because of the things you are supposed to do that you are not able to do. Then you begin to see negative, begin to see only only your faults, begin to see depressed depression. You know, do not let do not let maybe, maybe you you are praying for a family and. You know, a family, you have a family in your church, you're praying for that family. That family have not seen the benefit or the result of that prayer. You know, so you are feeling, uh, you are feeling somehow un uncomfortable because of, you know, seeing that that, that that challenge in that family has not gone. You know, so you begin to, you know, you begin to feel somehow, you know, feel inadequate. You begin to feel incomplete. I've seen so many leaders and so many people, men and women of God, fall into big temptation because of that. You need to learn to make what you do. If you if you read the story of Jesus Christ very well, you see how Jesus Christ loved what he does. He had compassion. He began to move with compassion. He began to move in love. He said, let the children come unto me because he loves them genuinely. So he made this assignment, his ministry, his, 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 his leadership style, he makes it worthwhile. He makes it a good example. So you need to love what you do genuinely. Make it fun. Make what you do fun. Make it lively. You have to make it lively. You know, we are in a modern society. Everybody, everybody, everybody throws shit at the church, throws shit at the pastor. Yes, we know that. We cannot hide away from that. We know that. We can't, we, we can't come here and sugarcoat. Everybody throws shit at the pastor. We know that. They believe that he's a pastor. He can take all things. Somebody called me on the phone and the person was 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 lying to me on the phone. He was lying to me on my face on the phone. He was telling me that he said I should give him somebody's number. I didn't give the person his number. That uh, that uh, why would I be behaving like this? I call myself a pastor. Am I supposed to? Go? I said, but you have not said I should give you the person's number. He said he said to me that, but the day he was talking to me, the phone was not clear and I didn't hear. Yeah, and he didn't send message. He didn't, and he was insulting me. He said I call myself a man of God. What kind of a man of God is that? Say that he is talking. I did not even allow him to finish to talking. I'm talking back at him. Ah. Mm -hmm. So people will, not only me, as a leader, as a person, as somebody who, who fears God, people will want to take advantage of you. That is how it works. 
People took advantage of Jesus. Jesus just was just looking at them because he knows his time has not come. And he knew that he cannot back at every dog that back at him on the road or else he will not fulfill his mission. So sometimes he just will just, the Bible will say Jesus will just, in the midst, will just disappear. In the midst, will just walk away. In the midst, he will just overlook. He will just go. Because it, those are not, those are irrelevant uh, distractions. You know, so you need to make your work fun. You need to make yourself happy. You need to make the things that make you happy. You don't have to be dry in the spirit all the time as a leader. You don't have to be dry in the spirit as a person. Now you need to recognize and celebrate your progress. So even the small, small steps you take, as God begins to confirm those steps, you need to celebrate those steps and your progress. It's, it's little, like we said, it's little by little. Even the word of God, the Bible says a little here, a little there. And the word, word, in word, word, word will go round. A little here, a steps here, a steps here, a little here, a little there. That's how it is. You must, we need to recognize that. Sometimes as a leader, we want to do everything at the same time. You know? You need to make every move excellent. As a leader, you need to make every move excellent. Every move you make, you need to make it worthwhile. You need to make it interesting. You need to make it, you know, enjoyable. Nobody likes nonsense. Is there anybody here that likes nonsense? Nobody likes nonsense. Anything you do, you need to be, you need to be, you need to be invested in it. What I mean, you need to be invested in it. You need to know that what you are doing will go a long way. You need to do it well. If you are coming to church, if you have a place of fellowship, you need to clean it, make it neat, make it comfortable, make it beautiful. You don't, you have to look good for God. Some people will say, I'm going to the house of God, they will look at it. No. You have to look good. You have to, we are serving a God. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a merciful, it's a beautiful God. You don't have to look haggard because you are serving. No. And that does not mean you have to go and do something to get money. No. We are not saying that. We are not, but we have to say you have to, if you if what you have, iron it. What, what I mean is wash it. Iron it. If you don't have money to buy another one, wash the one you have. Iron it. Do you understand? Make it presentable. Comb your hair. You know, comb your hair. The way uh, Brother Oliver's hair is shiny now, comb your hair, make your hair to be shiny. You know? Put better with on, like my sister. You know, I, I used to enjoy Sister Ruth when she was around. Oh, she would, would look Sunday, she would look, you know, again, again. she look every Sunday for Sister Ruth. It's like a Christmas. I'm telling you, thank you, sir. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. And finally, have a standard. Have a standard. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We'll close there today. Oh, God, thank you. What a cost. Have a standard. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Very important. Can anybody read that? We close for that for today. Hebrews 11 verse 6. 6. Yes. But without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please okay. him. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is rewarder of those who, seek, who diligently seek him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That means God has a standard. Even our God has a standard. He that must come to God must believe that he is God, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Our God has a standard. My brother and my sisters, please have standard. Don't just do anywhere beliefs. Any, any, no. Have a standard. Have a standard. And keep to your standard. Don't let people who does not have standard to talk you down from your standard. You know, it's people that does not even have standard that normally talks more, talk the most. Have a standard and keep to your standard. Praise God.